and bites cutting off the top of your head. Yeah, you got it. You're going to have to bring the camera closer. That'll work for the dove and brush tail. All right, go ahead. Let's see how this looks. Nope. Not until you're tying. Not until I'm tying. Not until okay. you're tying. And when you do, put it on lap. That'll be much better. Okay. Because I'll be focused more. I guess I'm going to keep these on for now. All right. Hey, guys. How you doing? We got 50 people so far, so that's good. All right. Well, guys, it's um, 7 o'clock on a Sunday, and this kind of has become tradition, so we, uh, we're, we're glad that you're here with us. Um, we're going to talk about uh, March Madness. Tonight, uh, the, the first round is, is through. The first 32 tires are through. Um, it, it's, it's been fantastic. I, I, I'm, like, addicted to this thing now. And I keep, like, today I must have logged on half a dozen times to see who was, who was winning, who was ahead. And uh, it's just something that, that's, it's been really fun. Um, but the, um, the flies that, that have been submitted have been fantastic and I, I knew that that we had some good tires out there but some of these flies are just out of this world and uh, really really glad that people have stepped up really glad that they're bringing their a-game um, we had four I think um, Norvice pro tires go out in the first round so that's four of, of our guys who uh, who got knocked out in the first round. Some of them against our other guys. Against our other guys, <laughs> right. Um, and there was there was one um, game that went down to the wire. Uh, we just checked it about five minutes ago, um, and, and we, we had the winner of that one. One last night, I checked at about 10 after 6, I guess, and it, this particular game had been running for 23 hours at that point. They were tied at a hundred, so it had ran for over twenty-three hours, and the game was tied at a hundred votes each. And uh, eventually, Shannon pulled it out. He wound up winning by about nine votes at the end of the uh, the end of the contest. But it th this has just been a blast, and um, we are definitely definitely going to do this next year again. Um, and w one of the things that that's been pretty cool, we we have a messenger group set up for all the people that are in the. Um, all 32 guys that, that signed up for the uh, for the event, and a lot of the guys, even though they've been knocked out, they're going to continue with the competition and tie the the, the different flies and just kind of you know get a feel for where they they may or may not have stacked up against the the rest of the crowd. Jake Jordan's watching. Oh, hey Jake, what's up, man? Um, one thing one thing that that I did notice, uh, and and I want to I, I want to kind of make mention here tonight, as as much as it is definitely the flies that, that the guys are tying, the photography and the quality of the picture has a lot to do with whether you are getting or or maybe not getting votes. And we had one case in particular where a guy um, did a stone fly and it was a it, it was a, a, a just a badass fly. And the picture maybe could have been a little better. And the picture, unfortunately, didn't show the details or the complexity of the pattern. Uh, so that's something that you guys, as you go into round two, may want to really, really focus on it is tying a great fly one, but then the quality of your picture um, second. If you're using an iPhone, use portrait mode. It makes a world of difference. There you go. Okay. So the people who advanced, and we've got the bracket is all... There you go. It's all done. Um, I'm going to post it up on the um, on the website here later tonight, or or, or maybe tomorrow. Closer to you. Bring it to me. Okay. And then to your left a little bit. There you go. Okay. And I, I'll read these through, but I'm, I'm going to post this up um, either later tonight. Realistically, probably tomorrow, it will go up on the homepage of the website, so you guys can take a look. Um, I had to change the font a little bit because it was coming out so small I couldn't read it. So it has the first name and the last 
um, initial. So it, if I get your last name wrong, I apologize. Uh, but I'll just go down and read. Um, in round two, we have Chaley, I hope I said that right, Ayers, against Lance Keckel. Ran, um, that's game one on the on the right hand um, on the left hand side of the bracket. Um, game two on the left hand is Sal Vetti against Kevin Griffin. Game three on the left is Duke Davis. He had a close one against a um, a, a Norvice ambassador, um, Keith Bearfield, and and Duke pulled it out, which which is which was cool. I was pulling for both of those guys, and I kept logging on and. And either one of them could have could have won, and I would have been happy. Um, but Duke pulled it out, so he's going against Jerry Griffin, and then um, Eric Snyder is going against um, Jock Scott. And if you guys have not seen it yet, go to the Norvice Facebook page and look at the stone fly that Jock tied. It's about the the third or fourth one down. He was against um, Vern White, and they were both fantastic ties. But you, you got to check this stone fly out. This thing is awesome. Oh, Cole Handerhand's watching. So who's oh, our, hey Cole, what's up? Who's our steelhead video guy? Yeah. So if there, we're not doing anything right with the video, send me a message afterwards. And yeah, you can tell us yeah, everything prof- that we're doing give, wrong. Give us your professional opinion. <laughs> we've uh, we, we've really been looking into these these Facebook lives and uh, Instagram as well. And I spent the day today, or a portion of the day, looking into some different camera equipment and and some different things that's really going to allow to get up close to to the fly when we're tying. And some of the things that that I'm envisioning that I want to do, I really want to get you guys up close so that you can see what we're doing. So hopefully in the next little while, you know, we'll be looking to upgrade some of the camera stuff and and we'll be able to give you a better quality um, experience on these lives. Um, okay, so that was left side of the bracket. Right side of the, bra- of the bracket was Pete, and, and I'm going to butcher your last name, but it was M- Metesky, or M- I, I don't even want to try it, but Pete M., um, and then against uh, Shannon Messer. Shannon and Michael Thomas, had they, they were the ones that were tied at 100 votes after 23 hours. <laughs> Sven commented um, asking if we're doing size 32s. <laughs> no, we will not be doing size 32s. We'll be doing a big dubbing brush. Um, so, yeah, Shannon and uh, and Michael Thomas were the ones that, that were tied at 100 last night, and then Shannon pulled it out, and he wound up winning like 112 to 103 or something like that. It was really, really good. Um, Tom Weir against Sean Carpenter. Tom tied a fantastic uh, caddis pupa, like a realistic caddis pupa. One of the the best flies, in my opinion, in the first round. Um, This is is one that I'm really, really looking forward to. So Ed Hayes, who is one of our ambassadors, against Braden Miller, who is another one of our ambassadors. And I already know what I know what fly both of them are going to tie. They they don't even know what the category is yet, and I can already tell you what fly they're going to tie. So this one is going to be a really really good one. These are two, you know, grade A tires that are going against each other. So I'm really going to be watching that one. Oh, and well, then Pat's watching. Oh, hey Pat, what's up? And then um, Matt Schindler advanced into round two. Matt ties. He ties on the Norvice. He ties a lot of. Um, like like spinner and I don't even know what you want to call them, but like spinners on tubes for uh, salmon. And Matt hadn't tied a fly, an, an actual traditional fly, and I think he said like 24 years. And um, so he tied just a classic, clean pheasant tail, nothing fancy, n- nothing you know, abstract or anything, just a nice clean pheasant tail. And and he wound up advancing into the second round. <clears throat> and then he's going against Terry Landry, who tied a fantastic fly as well. So that's going to be the matchups in round two, and th- they're all chomping at the bit now to know because I've been getting text messages and 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 emails and 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 whatnot what the next um, category is going to be, and the next fly that we're going to tie in round two is going to be streamer. So any streamer pattern uh, that you want to tie is eligible for round two. Um, Round two is going to start 
basically right now, Braden is probably already tying. As soon as I said streamer, he started tying. I, I can almost guarantee that. Um, the flies are due to um, Chris by Wednesday at 7 o'clock. That's going to give you two full days to get your pattern tied, get it photographed, and get it in. 7 a.m. 7 a.m. That's 7 in the morning because I'm going to start posting them Wednesday night. And we had 16 games in this last one. This one we will have, we're going to have eight. So I'll probably do two nights and we'll do the same thing. I'll post four one night and then post four um, the other night. So the voting on this next round will be done will be done Friday night. Um, and and I, I'm not sure what the, what the time frame and what the schedule is going to be moving forward in the week, but I, I will definitely let you guys know. So check out the, uh, the Norvice Facebook page and, and we'll have uh, the announcement um, as to when we'll start the next round. And we'll announce the winners and show the bracket just like we did here tonight. So guys, it is, it's streamers. Um, I'm going to send a message out as soon as we sign off here. I'm going to send a message out over the, um, the uh, messenger group that we have set up. And you guys can start tying now and your flies are due. Pictures, one in progress, one final. The final has to be in the vise, just like we did before. You can show the, you know, the front part of the jaws. These are going to be bigger patterns, I'm guessing, so you may be able to get the whole vise in there. But we have to see the vise in the final um, picture, and those are due to um, to Chris by 7 a.m. Monday morning. That's our time, Wednesday which is morning. I'm sorry, Wednesday morning, which is Eastern time. And I just want to take a minute to throw out a thank you to uh, to, to Chris Dugan. He is he is busting it on this challenge. He's he's doing all the brackets. He's he's taking all the pictures and putting them in the proper folders for me. So it makes it a lot easier for me to um, to post it. And as as much as this is a ton of fun, and it is a ton of fun, it's a lot of work. And for one person, for me to do this on my own, it, it would be a challenge. So we're we're really fortunate that. Um, Chris has stepped up and, and has volunteered to do this. So thank you, Chris, and uh, appreciate everything that uh, that you're doing. Losers bracket, post your flies to the messenger now. Okay. For the messenger. Uh, Braden's watching. Braden, all right. I guess it took him a little while to get off the river. Yeah, they, they were they were floating today. Did you catch any fish today? We won't know for 10 seconds, mm -hmm. so just move on. I will. <laughs> all right. So that's it for March Madness. Um Quick message about the Facebook Lives. I will probably continue to do the um, the, the the live shows here, and, and we're gonna we're gonna look into uh, Instagram Live as well. I will probably continue to do these through the March Madness. So we're picturing that's going to be about three more of of these episodes, um, and then we're going to turn it over to some of the uh, ambassadors. And I've I've been talking to them. And, you know, you may have a Facebook Live from, say, Brittany and Brian Davenport out in uh, Idaho. Or you may have one from Braden down in uh, Virginia. You know, so it's, it's kind of cool that, that we're able to move this around. Um, Tony Muncy out in Oregon, I know he's going to do one or, or two for us. So you're, you're going to get to see not just myself, but a lot of guys tie on the vice. You're going to get to see some different techniques and learn different flies in different geographic areas. So I'm, I'm really excited about this and uh, some of the things that we can do. So if you guys have any questions about that, please feel free to, uh, to fire away. Uh, we had a request actually on the first one that we did two weeks ago to show or demo the, uh, the dubbing brush table. And last week we couldn't get to it. I wanted to do some shad flies last week, but uh, this week we, um, we're going to do the dubbing brush table. Now, just a quick note about last week's episode. It is up on our YouTube channel. Uh, it went up, I think, on Tuesday. And we had a lot of requests for the, um, for the fly recipes of the, the three flies that I tied. Those recipes are in the comments on the, um, on the YouTube uh, post. So um, John, our IT guy, really, he, he did like a table of content. So from five minutes, 30 seconds to seven minutes, we talk about this. And from this to this is this. And, and you can really hone in on what you want to see. So you don't have to watch the whole hour long broadcast to see the uh, whatever fly you want to see. But the recipes are in the uh, comments of the Facebook. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to let me know. 
Braden said fishing was slow and the whole family floated, so he didn't fish a lot, which means that he's using the excuse that his family was there as to why. Oh, uh, don't blame it fish. on your family. I would have caught fish if I was there. <laughs> What's the sticker that uh, William has? It's not the fly you suck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All right. So we're going to talk today about the dubbing brush table. And this is a cool, um, it's a cool piece that, that, that we make. Um, Norm started making this, I guess, about 15 years or so ago. And when you get it, it's all packaged up, and you basically have two bamboo pieces, a top and a bottom, an upright with a, with a thumb screw on it, and then you have this shaft that slides down inside. So it's adjustable, so you can use it with, with different vices. Okay, you can use it with our vice, or you know, if you have a vice that you have set up on a um, on a C clamp or something with a different height, you can you can raise and lower it. Um, so he trout set on a topwater smallie eating a streamer. <laughs> Grant commented and goes, That looks like the only O'Neill to catch a snakehead. You can only make the joke if you spell our last name right. Uh, no, you can make that joke all you want. Hey, Grant, look in the top left corner, <laughs> or right corner, whatever. All right. So dubbing brushes. I'm going to show you two ways to use this. I'm going to show you a way to do it as you're, as you're tying the fly. And we're working on the camera because we've got to shoot. We want to shoot down so that you can see the, the top of the, of the table when I'm, when I'm doing this. So just, just bear with us here for a second. You can actually see it pretty well. Okay. All right, so let me take this away. Now, if I do, how's that? That's fine. Because how's of the that? Way do the other one. Yeah. Can't do that one? It washes it out. Okay, all right, we'll go with the lower LED's one. LED's too bright and white. All right, so I'm going to put a hook in here. And you guys, um, feel free to fire away with your questions. I do go back after, and, and I look at the comments and the questions, and if we missed one, just just feel free to ask it again. And if if we don't get to it, because a lot of things start flying across that, and it's very easy to miss one, I do try to go back and um, and look and, um, and and answer the questions when when we're done. Okay, so imagine if I'm going to show you one way to do it with the um, with the thread, and then one way to do it with the actual wire where we make a brush. So imagine if I was tying a nymph, and a lot of my nymphs, especially my bigger ones, uh, like my steelhead nymphs, I like to do the, the thorax. I don't like to do a traditional dub. I like to do a, um, a dubbing um, loop with them. I think that the, the fibers are, they're more open. They, I think they move better. I think they trap air bubbles when the flies under the water, and I think it gives it a, a bit of a, a more realistic look. Okay, so I'm going to, let me see, what am I going to dub here? I'm going to dub that. So I will use this bright orange, or this bright red, so that you guys can see it. And I'll do, I'll do one in, in the traditional way that we would dub on a Norvice, and then I'll do one with the, uh, with the table. Okay, so I'm tied on. All right, I was not set up for that. I was set up for the table. Oh, that's good because I just broke my thread. Oh, I caught that. <laughs> I, I, I got that. So I'm tied on. I'm going to throw a half hitch in. All right. Okay, and I'm going to go on my cradle. Now, I've got a little bit of Senyu's laser dub. I believe this is uh, Sculpin, Sculpin olive. olive. Okay, so... The traditional way, and you know what, I want to do something here because I want to get that, that nasty little bit of thread off of there because it's going to mess up what I'm doing. And just give it a thread base over top of it and lock it down. There you go. Don't break your thread. Here's my thread base. I'll put a half hitch in and I'll go on my cradle. Okay. So, the typical way that we would dub on a Norvice, if you're doing like a, like a nymph um, abdomen or a dry fly body, we would tease out a little bit of dubbing, just like so. 
I would spin the vise, touch the dubbing to the thread, dubbing would jump out of my fingers right up onto the thread, and there's my dubbing noodle. Now you can see it's loosened up a little bit, so I'm going to pinch it here, and I'm going to spin the vise, and I'm going to tighten that right down for me. Okay, so now you can see that would be what our traditional dubbing noodle would look like. Now I'll, I will apply it to the hook. So I'll come underneath here, work my way to the back, okay, and then start wrapping this forward. Okay, and then that would be like your traditional dubbing for, say, a dry fly or a uh, nymph abdomen or, or what have you. And if you wanted to do your thorax that way, that would be fine. Um, if you're doing smaller flies, 16s, 18s, you, you can do it that way and it will be fine. When you get into bigger flies, say 14s, 12s, you know, even some 10s maybe that we still head with, um, I, I, want the, I want the thorax to be bigger and, and aired out and, and fluffier. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to start this like I would a regular dubbing loop. So I'm going to make traditional dubbing loop, three in front. Wrap it around twice. I'm going to half hitch it. Okay, and I'm going to go on my cradle. So there is my traditional dubbing loop that you're used to seeing. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut this. Now I'm going to take, before I do that, this is the one time where I will use a dubbing wax and I'm going to put just a little bit of wax on there I'm going to take my table okay I'm going to put it right underneath my thread now this thumb screw is facing me I'm going to loosen the thumb screw up and I'm going to raise the table up so it is literally just touching the um, the top of the table okay same material. I'm going to take this out and I'm just going to take little pinches and I'm going to touch it on the thread. That's, that's probably enough right there for this for what I'm showing. Now if you wanted to you could put little this this stuff has some flash in it if you were using a material that, that doesn't have any flash you could uh, you could put some flash in your in your brush if you wanted to. Alright now I'm going to take this end And I'm going to take my wax. I'm going to just wax it just a little bit. And all that is, is to keep this stuff in the loop until you spin it. Now I'm going to take this, this loose one. I'm going to come right over top. So now I have thread on the bottom of the, um, or thread on the top of the table. Then I have material on top of the thread. Then I've taken my tag end and I brought it over and I've kind of sandwiched the material in between the two um, two pieces of thread. Now I'm going to pinch this together. I'm going to take and I'm going to very carefully remove the table and I'm going to spin the vise. Okay, and that's what that's doing is that's taking that now I'm going to pinch it here. Okay. Now, I've kind of got the same thing going that I had with the, with the other dubbing, but it's looser, and, and I've got way too much here. But it, it gives me a, a more looser, more flowing kind of kind of, of, of dub. And I'm going to take one of these. Um, my buddy Tony Muncy sent me some of these. They're these Velcro rakes that, that he makes. And I'm just going to pick this out. And you can see you get, you get a cool dub on the core but then you get these these light wispy um, fibers out here and I think it gives you a better looking fly so now I'm going to come underneath here come right up onto the fly and I'm going to dub that forward to about right there and I, I put way way too much on here so I'm going to treat it like a dubbing loop and I'm going to come up here and I'm going to do three wraps in front three behind And three more in front. Now I can come in and I can cut this off. Okay. 
And now if I, if I want, I can take these one of these little Velcro things and I can kind of rake this out. And now I've got where's my bodkin? Is it in your trash can? No. Okay, here's a bodkin. So now this is this is the first one that I did, which is more tightly packed. And you can see it's got the more uniform, traditional kind of dubbing shape. Now if you move up here, you can see where I've got the, the core or I've got the bottom of, of the hook is dubbed, but then I've got these these loose fibers, which is what I want. Um, in the water, I think they kind of they kind of undulate and and they just give it a more realistic look, and they will um, they will also uh, trap air, so it gives the the nymph a uh, in my opinion a more realistic look. It looks more like a real bug, and then you can just take and fold them back, do your next um, step, or you can fold your wing case over top and tie it down. And like I said, any any nymph that's about bigger than a size 14, I will do this way. I'll do the thorax in a loop as opposed to traditional um, traditional dubbing. So Michael Collier asked how you do a half hitch again, which I tried to get you before you cut off. But oh, okay, oh, that's, that's cool. No, just yeah, he said something about that on uh, I think on Facebook uh, this week about learning to do the half hitch. Okay. A lot of different ways to do this. Let me get this hook in here and I will show you. Okay. All right, so we're tied on. Let me lay down some thread. Okay. So, the way that I half hitch, a half hitch is basically just an overhand knot. And there's a lot of different ways to do it. Um, a lot of people don't realize, usually your bodkin has, has a little detent in the, in the back side of it. And that's a half hitch tool. So you can take the back side of this, you can wrap it around, put this up on the eye of the hook, and pull it. And that'll give you a half hitch. Okay. I don't always have this in my hand, and I don't I don't like to pick up tools that if, if I don't need them. So the way that I do a half hitch, this thread is coming off the bottom of the hook right now. So the thread's wrapped over the top, and it's th this is coming off the bottom side. I will take I'll put my finger here, and I'll make a loop. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that, but that's that's what I have there. Yeah, they're not off on that side. They're focused on the fly. Am I too far forward? Yeah. All right. Now they can kind of see it. Okay. So it's coming off the bottom. I'll put my finger here in the middle and I'll make a loop. Now I'll come up to the top of the hook. So the bottom portion of the loop is coming off the bottom of the hook. The top part of the loop is going over the top. I will make one full wrap. Now this loop, you have to move from the front to the back. But when you do, you split this, the inner portion of the loop with the hook eye. So the bottom is coming off the bottom, top is going over the top. I've got one wrap on it. I will take this and I will move it from front to back and then pull my, my uh, um, bob, bobbin. And there you go. All right, here, I'll do it again. So you do a loop, one turn, pull the bobbin. Very, very simple way to do it. Um, uh, if, if you need me to, I'll show it again here at the end if, if you haven't quite got it. Or, Mike, send me a message and um, I, can, I can try to talk you through it. Or we'll set up something where you can come to the house and, uh, and I'll show you what to do. Very, very easy way to do a half hitch. Okay. All right. Now we're going to do the dubbing brush table to make an actual dubbing brush okay I just just made this one before we we uh, came on live this is um, this is craft fur it's it's the craft fur from Fairflies which is is a fantastic product um, it's got more length I think than your regular craft fur that you get at the um, at the fly shop and there's also very little under fur to it okay this is nine thousandths stainless steel wire that comes with the dubbing 
uh, brush kit when you buy it. We give you one spool. It's made by Uni, so you can get it online um, at any, um, really at any reputable fly shop should have dubbing brush wire. Okay, so I'm going to set the vise up a little bit differently for this because we're going to when when you twist this wire up, you're, you're doing a lot of spinning. So these are my standard hubs. I'm going to swap these out for the Magnum hubs. I'm going to pop my jaw off. I'm going to pop my front hub off. Take my O-ring off. Take the rear hub. Grab my Magnum. Rear hub. Line that up. Push it in. Put the O-ring on. Get my Magnum front hub. Put that on. Tighten it down, then take my jaws and tighten that down. So there we go. I just switched from the standard standard front hub to the Magnum Magnum hubs. You can see it's very very easy to do. What that does gives me a little more weight, so that when I'm spinning the dubbing brush, I get a little more force. So I'll get I'll get some more spin or more um, centrifugal force out of it. All right, there's my wire, okay, it's 9,000 uni. They make this in six, seven, and nine. Three, six, and nine. Three, six, and nine, okay. And uh, this is the nine, this is the biggest one that they make. Um, if, if you're just starting out, I would definitely um, use the nine. It's, it's a little easier, um, less apt to break. That's another reason why we use the stainless wire instead of the copper. Copper wire is um, it's a bit brittle, and if you're not careful when you're spinning it, you can break the wire. Okay, so what we do is we're going to pull out a fair amount of wire. You have to get from the thread post to the vise and then back to the thread post. So you want to kind of measure this up and make sure that you have enough. And I need a little more, so I'm going to pull out a little more. If you don't have enough, you're going to have a problem when you go to spin it. Okay, so now I've got my um, wire in my bobbin, and I'm actually going to wrap it around the thread post. So I'm not just hanging it, and you might want to turn the camera so they can see that. Okay, so I'm taking it, and instead of hanging it like we would when we're tying, I'm actually wrapping it around the thread post. All right, I'm going to take the wire. I'm going to come up here into the um, into the jaw. I'm going to pull this tight. I'm going to tighten my uh, my adjustment screw down, and then I'm going to throw the cam. And I'm just going to, I'm going to make sure that's tight. You want this wire to be fairly straight, as straight as possible. Okay, so now I've got a wire that's run from my thread post to the jaw. It's basically straight, and it's in kind of the same configuration as our um, thread when we're when we're tying our fly. Uh, Terry Landry asked if we spin until the wire breaks or if we stop before. I typically stop before. If if you're spinning to where the the wire breaks, most of the time it's going to break right here. It's going to break right at the jaws, especially if you're clamped in the jaws. Sometimes it will break right here in the middle of your brush and you don't want the wire to break in in the middle so as you do it and as as you make a bunch of them you'll kind of get a feel for how much twist you're supposed to have in the in the wire you can tell by looking at it and um you, you'll know when to stop and that's another thing i like about the stainless wire is once you get it twisted up it typically doesn't untwist so when you stop spinning the vise it, it will pretty much stay there when you when you clip it off and with it being the 9,000s thick, it's going to take a lot to get it to break. If we were using three, it would be much easier. But the 9,000s, it's you can spin and spin and spin. So even though it's wire, I'm going to put a little wax on it. This is uh, Jay Stockard Low Tack um, Dubbing Wax. This is the only time that I ever use dubbing wax on um, on any, any type of dubbing. And all that is is to help the material just stick to the wire. Okay, now I'm going to take our table. I'm going to put it underneath. Practicing the half hitch now. I think I got it. All right, cool. All right, so I've got down here, I've got chartreuse and black um, Fairfly's 
craft fur. And we're just going to cut little pieces off and we're just going to alternate laying them down on the table over top of the wire. All right, so very little under fur in this, which is great. So there's that's my first piece. Okay, it's about yay thick. And Casey just, texted us yelling, saying it's fly fur because apparently you're not getting it right. It's fly fur. I'm I'm very sorry. It is fair flies fly fur. It's in all caps. She even yells over text messages. She yells over text messages. <laughs> all right, <laughs> I'm gonna get yelled at for that. I know. <laughs> And Braden's going to laugh when he sees it, too. All right, so we'll do... And that's the cool thing about making your own brushes. And back when when Norm made this product, this dubbing brush table, you, you got to realize this is going back, I don't know, 15, maybe, maybe longer than that, maybe 18 or so years ago. Nowadays, th there, there is a bunch of, of fantastic production made dubbing brushes on the market back then when when he came out with this product th there weren't and and this was this was really revolutionary and as as much as as there are good good brushes out on on the market today um th there's something to be said for getting the the exact color or the exact thickness or the exact materials that that you want in your brush and like I said, as, as good as the production stuff is, and, and some of it is, is really good, you, you're limited still on, on your selection. And, and a good, a good um, point of that, uh, Patrick Robinson just picked up one of these, and he texted me, I, it, it may have even been yesterday or the day before, and he did one with um, Badger and Ice Dub. And it was one of the coolest dubbing brushes that, that I've ever seen. And it, it, it will make, and, and of course, the first thing I said to him is that's going to make a great uh, collar for an intruder. And he's like, of course, he's a steelhead guy, so that's what he was thinking. And, and it's a really, really cool looking brush. And I doubt that you're going to find a production-made dubbing brush anywhere with, with Badger in it. it it's, it's just not going to be available. This is this is fly fur, as, as we mentioned. Um... Fox Arctic Fox is another one that that will do that will make dubbing brushes out of um, uh, Enrico fibers um, are a great one to make dubbing brushes out of um, pheasant tail fibers. If you're doing if you're doing the intruder with the with the composite loop type of deal, you can do that. Marabou ostrich. Marabou ostrich. Yeah, there, there's really there's there's no. There's no, the, the limit is is your imagination as to as to what you can put in these things. I had a guy ask if we're doing it uh fifty fifty or sixty forty. It's actually more about eighty twenty. What's that? How you're laying the material on the brushes? What's sticking off one? Well, I'm going to move it. I, I just I, that's a good question, and I'm going to move it forward here in a minute. And and that's another thing that you can. I'm using the full the full length of this stuff when I cut it off. If I wanted to, and I wanted to make a shorter brush, and that's another thing, you have options of making different lengths. Instead of using the full length, I could cut this here and use half length of it. Um, so it gives you, it, it really does give you some, some good options. All right, one more here. One don't more. sneeze. Yeah, this is, uh, this is why you use the wax. This is why we don't typically demo this at shows either, because between the the AC system and the heat or people walking by, you know, this stuff goes everywhere when you're trying to do it at a show. Okay. There's my last chartreuse. Okay. Now this is fly fur, so it doesn't have any, any flash in it. So I want to put a little bit of flash in. So this is, this is angel hair. Okay. Don't go crazy with this. Okay. You just need to pull a little bit out and just lay it on there. That's that's actually a little too much. Uh, one of our tires on our team is really big into dubbing brushes. He uses a lot of Starburst uh, dubbing from Fly Tires Dungeon, and it looks really awesome when his brushes oh, is are that, finished. Is that, um, Thomas Williams? Thomas, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's All right, the now, brush he uses. 
I'm going to take this is my this is the one that's going to go over top and I'm going to wax it and again this is just this is just to hold the materials set my wax aside I'm going to bring the wire over top and I'm going to kind of sandwich that together now this is where I'm going to very carefully I'm going to move this stuff out a little bit Okay, you, you've got you've got options here until you start twisting. Once you twist it, you are what I like to call dancing with who brought you at that point. You can push it forward. Don't go crazy because you could push it too far and lose it. Okay, so there's so I've got the table. I've got the wire going over top of the table. I've got the material and the flash on top of the wire. Then I've got the other section of wire folded over the top. I'm going to pull it tight and I'm actually going to wrap it around the thread post the way that I did. Okay, now I'm going to put my scissors down. I'm going to pinch it here. I'm going to very carefully lift this up. And I'm going to spin the vise. All right, so you want to spin it a little bit and get it started. Now, I'm going to come in here. You can see where they, they at the beginning, they will start to kind of wrap up on themselves, and you got to pick that out, okay? And you're just going to spin a little bit. Get that out of there. Spin it. Now, that's about what we're looking for. Okay, now I'm going to switch from my bodkin, and again, you can use these these little Velcro rakes, and you can rake them out, or I like to use the, the dog uh, flea comb for this, and yeah. you, you can just brush it. So, apparently, Braden Miller has a uh, discount code for Fairfly's products. Casey okay. told us to mention it, and then she would post it in the comments. There you go. I don't know what percentage off it is, but... The stuff's five dollars for their better version of craft fur, their fly fur, and a discount code on top of it. It's a no brainer. Yeah. Braden's on there, he's on their pro stand. Sorry that I can't go any further back to show the full setup. No, the, I just you're gonna do it without the iPad. Alright, I'm I'm flying blind here because I can't I can't see what I'm doing because we can't get the iPad iPad to hook back up. But there's that's that's your basic setup. So we've got the wire that's hooked on the um, it's wrapped around the thread post, both bottom uh, layer and top layer. It's clamped here in the jaws, and then when you spin it, you get this this kind of palmered or or kind of radiating out effect of the materials. And you can keep brushing it. And like I said, these these uh, flea combs that you get at the pet store are great for this. And once you get all the the knots and the uh, and and the mats out of it, and that's that's a big part of in the beginning. You saw where I I would spin it, but I spun it just a little bit, and then where it started to wrap up on itself, I would pick it out and then spin a little more, pick it out, and then once you get it kind of in this configuration and you get some twists in it, then you you can really kind of go to town on it. All right, so now the brush is done, so I'm going to unclamp it out of the jaws, and I'm going to. They're right here. Get my wire cutters. Do not cut this stuff with your scissors. And I'm going to cut it right here. Okay. And there's there's my brush. Now, you can make these as as heavy or as as sparse as you like. Here's one that we spun up earlier. That's one color. It's considerably sparser. Okay. So if you were doing like like an intruder, um, where you were doing two collars. You, you maybe don't want one that's quite as thick as this, so you may want to go with the sparse one. And then what you can do, after you get them spun up like this, you can take them and you can lay them, um, lay a book on top of them, right? And then that'll flatten them out. So they'll look more like your traditional brushes that you see that, that you would buy in um, in a store. So your brother okay. commented. What did my brother comment? He said, very nice tips. I used to fish with a bunch of old timers up on Kettle, Kettle Creek and the Konica Jig, and he cannot spell Konica Jig. Okay. They swore by a fly called Joe's Fly. Do you ever tie them? No, I don't tie Joe's Flies. You can buy those at, um, at uh, like Walmart, I think. 
but I fully expected you to say, tie me one that looks like a rooster tail. So right before we went on, Tyler tied this especially for you. So you can see it's got your marabou tail, your black body, and then your silver flash to represent the spinner. So there you go. There's your rooster tail fly. It's got about an ounce of lead underneath it. All right. So you can take these. You can lay them in a lay them on top of a book, and that will um, that will kind of squash them down and make them flat like your normal um, dubbing brushes that that you're used to seeing. So we got a question with a brush that size. What hook would you tie it on, and what species would you chase? Good question. Because I'm going to tie with it right now. So I'm going to pop out my standard jaw. I'm going to pop in my large jaw. Okay. And Casey Miller just posted Brayton's 20% off code. So your $5 awesome patch of fly fur is now $4. There you go. Plus their insane brushes. And it all goes to a good cause. The guys... Uh, help some people out overseas that have been through some rough stuff and that's where a lot of the money from the company goes that's so. why it's called fair flies because they it's, do it's they fair do fly trade. tying yeah. under the fair trade act so yeah it's it's a it's a uh it's a great company and it's it's they are fantastic products and i am not on their pro staff so that's and and here i am endorsing their stuff all right so i got my um my large shells in this is a one-aught gamagatsu b10s and then I'm going to show you how to take this brush that we just made and spin it into a very, very quick bait fish pattern. Okay, so I'm going to get uh, get some chartreuse here. And I'm going to tie it on and lay down, lay down the thread base. So about right there. Now I'm going to take the brush and I want to I want to clip this wire right up to, to where the brush starts. And again, don't use your scissors for that. If it was the copper wire, if you did happen to be using copper, I, I would I would maybe do it with the stainless. I, I wouldn't. Okay. So now you can see I've got the, the end of my wire is right here. I'm just going to take and I'm going to tie this on. And be careful where you cut that wire is very, very sharp. So it can cut your thread. Hey, Duke. Uh, do you guys change diameter of wire for added weight, or does that not matter? No, nah, the way it, 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 you're not, even with something this big, you're not talking about a lot of weight. It's more so the diameter of the wire, the more stuff that you're trying to put in here the tighter you have to compact it down to get it to hold right. So you need a bigger wire because you have to spin it more. Okay. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to stroke this back. Oh, Duke's here. He apologized for being late. He was tying his fly for the next round. And then I'm just going to take and I'm going to palmer this. Oh, no, you didn't. Wire slipped out. Wire slipped out. All right. Hold on. You broke your thread at the beginning. You're sending the wire out now. It takes a. Uh, I'll it's, tell you what. It takes it's it, amateur hour. It over takes here. a special person to tie lot to tie live because there's a lot of things that can go wrong when you're doing this. But that's okay. I would rather. I would rather you guys see it in real time than than watch a video and make it look like everything's perfect because, it's not. Okay. Now, I'm going to stroke these back, and I'm going to start palmering this, and I'm going to work it up the shank. And with a brush this length, it's very important that you keep brushing it back so that you don't, you don't want to wrap over top of the wraps that you've already laid down on the shank of the hook and this would be one time where maybe spinning the vise it may be easier to just wrap it because you want to take and see how I've got fibers going forward and fibers going back you want to stroke the fibers back so that you don't you don't want to trap anything underneath and you just keep keep wrapping and at the tail of the fly your your wraps are going to be farther apart and then as you get closer to the front of the fly 
they're going to be closer together. So you're going to kind of barber pole it at the back. And then when you get up to the front, you're going to start wrapping them closer together to build, to build bulk up. And you just wrap and stroke it back. Pick all the stuff out. I mean, you could wrap and do like one turn width using the rotation of the vise, right? You could, yeah. Yeah, I just find when you're working sometimes with these with these materials that are really, really soft and wispy, it's it's easier to just to just maybe wrap the old way. And that kind of goes against a lot of the stuff that I say with with spinning the vise. But you know, sometimes it's just it's it's easier, I think, to just do it the old school way. So there, I'm all the way up to the eye of the hook. Now with my auto bobbin, I'm right back in and ready to tie, and we're gonna go three behind, and you gotta kind of fish it through. And when it's wire, I typically do three behind and three in front. And kind of like last week with that, with the fly, with the mono, because this stuff is so ornery, I kind of, I repeat that a couple of times. So I go three behind, three in front, three behind. It looks like a mess now, but just bear with me. It's, it's all going to come together. Now I'm going to reach in here. We got a guy watching from Columbia. Columbia. He was here last week. Yep. And I'm going to click that off. Okay, so now I've got enough for probably another fly here, so I'm just going to set that aside. Now I'm going to take and I'm going to rake this out. That's like the picker fly that you caught all the fish when it didn't catch anything. <laughs> <laughs> I think Ed's watching, too. Is he? All right. Or now, he was the last one before it all cut out. See how I stroke this back, and I'm just going to build up a little little thread here. Now, like I said, remember, watch that um, that uh, wire where you cut it will, will absolutely cut your thread like nobody's business. And there we go. Okay. So now I'm going to whip finish this. super super easy bait fish pattern and you can see when you when you do the two tone and you can do as many colors in here as you want what it what it gives you on the finished product of the fly uh, duke showed up late and asked what kind of brush we're using we just made it with the vice dude duke i just i just literally made that with the dubbing brush table on the vice oh we got a guy from newfoundland canada that's um that's the guy, that's, I think that's... Scott Kip. Martin. Oh, okay, now, I, I think one of the guys that's in the... Um, Jock Scott. Jock Scott, the yeah. Canada. What are you looking for? This right here. All right, and we'll brush this back. The cat or dog brush with the wire works really well for yeah. when you're working with craft fur. And... Sorry, fly fur before fly Casey fur. yells at me. Yeah. And now, we'll put a little bit of this is Zappa Gap Medium. And I'm just going to put a little bit on the head. Oh, the brush we're using. Duke was asking the brush we're using to brush it out with. Oh, yeah, the we brush did. we're using to. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's a, a, a flea brush, a, a dog and cat flea brush that you get from the pet store. All right. And then we're going to take our Flyman fish skull, slide it right on. Okay, do it right there. Make sure that our. Casey said, finally. Oh, we got Scotland on here. We had Scotland last week, too. Okay. We got Missouri. We got another one from Canada. There you go. So now I think Casey's proud of us for finally saying fly fur. Fly fur. All right. And then I'm just going to take, and I'm going to build up a little thread dam there in front of the, uh, fit on front of the skull. A little more. I'll fish for striper all day with that fly. Yep. So that was species you were talking about. Basically anything that will eat a bait fish. So it's a one aunt Gamagatsu B10S. So striper, bluefish, bass, bass, pickerel. pickerel, northern pike. Hey, Enrico's watching. No way. Hey. What's up, Enrico? 
we're talking about how to make brushes and your material yep. and your brushes came up more than a few times in conversation. All right. And then you just take, brush this back. Now we would obviously put eyes on the skull to finish it off, but there you go. Gives you a great bait fish profile. Okay, you got mottled kind of two-tone colors in there, so it gives it a cool look. There's a little bit of flash underneath it, and the best thing about it is it moves like crazy in the water. So there you go. There's the two different ways that we can use the dubbing brush table. Uh, we did a uh, we did a craft fur or a, a fly fur um, dubbing brush. I did one on the hook uh, with the thread. So we'll hang out here for another couple of minutes or so. If you have any questions, please feel free to fire away. Enrico asked if we're having fun. Oh, all the time, buddy. How about you? Are you having fun? I missed you at the show this year. It was less fun in Denver without you being next to us. <laughs> there you go. How cool is that? I see that fly. Cool. I'm going to put that in my box. Okay. All right. Any questions? Nothing. Well, it, it's a 10-second delay, so... Uh, Bob Larsell, Larsell asked if we're going to do uh, natural hair next time. So, uh, we, we're probably not going to do a dubbing brush video for a little bit. So, we just did this one, so... Uh, the, the natural hair, it, it's the same... I mean, what I did with the, with the fly fur and the way that I laid it on the table, your, your natural hair is, is the same way. And I mentioned... Um, Patrick uh, doing doing some at a badger and and his brush was it's about this size it's about that size and and the badger has a real cool it kind of changes colors you know it's one color to tip and then it kind of changes colors down at the uh, at the the core of the brush and it just made a really cool brush but it's the same the same steps exactly the same the same wire with the wax and all that lay it on the table it's just a different material that you're laying on the table. Now, with your um, natural furs, depending on what time of year the animal was harvested, it may or may not have a lot of under fur in it. And the one thing that I will say is you have to get as much, if not all, of the under fur out. Or when you go to wrap it, it will really kind of mat up and bunch up and it just won't give you, it doesn't give you that nice, that nice flowing kind of kind of look that you're looking for it 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 makes it real thick here in the middle and and it just doesn't look good so naturals are great but if you're using them make sure you get all of the under fur out so duke asked what's the next fly for march madness that's a streamer oh it's a streamer yeah you, i'm sorry you showed up late so it's any any um any streamer that you want to tie chris dugan said that he's going to be purchasing a dubbing brush table soon good so, uh, Scott Martin, the guy from Newfoundland, uh -huh. asked if we could do an Atlantic salmon fly next time. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what. Um, let, let's, let's pass that off to one of our ambassadors who's good at doing Atlantic salmon flies because I'm really not. Um, it's, hey, it, Tony Thomas, are you there? <laughs> yeah, right. That's a, uh, th that's a style of, of tying that, that has always intrigued me and, and it's just something that, that I've never taken the time to, to kind of sit back and, and learn how to do. I probably should. Um, I'll see if we can get a, a you know, kind of no frills Atlantic salmon pattern in the mix. We got to keep these under about an hour. Uh, but I'm pretty sure at least at this juncture, it's not going to be me tying it. So what else? What else you guys got? Nothing else? Uh, Terry Landry said he'd do the Atlantic salmon fly. All right. Well, Terry, we'll we'll hook you up and uh, we'll, we'll get you we'll get you in, and then you can do a Facebook live with an Atlantic salmon. There you go. See, guys, that's how easy this is. Only kicker is you have to send us the Atlantic salmon fly afterwards. <laughs> Casey Miller said, looks like it's time for an Atlantic salmon tie along. Like, I think Casey should teach us how to do an Atlantic salmon fly. Yeah. 
What is the difference between the old long style rotation handle and the short stubby one? I'm not sure. He's what... talking about the, there was Norm had, and and the longer one was for the original um, fine point jaws that came out of the bottom of the hub. And if you notice our new Gen four fine or Gen three fine points, they we we've engineered them so they work right with the front hub. The the older ones would come out of the bottom and hinge up this way. And it put a lot of weight below the center of the vise, and that long handle had a um, had a counterweight on the back, and that was to counterweight the vibration. The little short one, which I don't use it because it for me it gets in the way. It threads right in here in the back hub, and it's it's about yay long. And some guys use it; they like to to put their fingers in between it, spinning around. I personally don't because when I'm spinning, it always seems to get in the way. So that's that's the only difference. So Casey commented dot, 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 but then she texted me and said, I'll teach you something, all right? Yeah, okay. All right, anything else, guys? If not, we're going to be signing off here. Brittany Davenport said, let's do an Atlantic fly tie along. Okay, well, that's one of the things that we're, um, that we're working on with some of, the, uh, some of the technology that we're looking into. All right, I'm not seeing anything else. We've asked a couple times. I think that's about it. All right, guys, we're going to sign off. If you have anything uh, that you think of, shoot me a message or just um, answer or ask the question in the, um, in the, in the comments of this thread, and we'll get, this, uh, we'll get it edited, and we'll put it up on the, um, on the YouTube page here in the next day or two. All right, guys, thank you very much.